In previous videos, we've seen how trees are uniquely named using genus and species names. But in this video, we will begin to explore the descriptive world of species naming. Having an understanding of these will help you to understand the Latin names and also help you to learn something about the tree or shrub that you're looking at. Species names often describe some characteristic of the tree, but can also give a clue as to where they were originally found or who collected them. So we end up with names like Ilex aquifolium, where aquifolium tells you that it has pointy leaves, exactly what you would expect from a holly bush. Or the beech tree, Fagus sylvatica. Sylvatica means something that grows in the woods, or Picea breweriana, a spruce tree named for the American botanist William Brewer, who lived from 1828 to 1910. So let's look at some of the species names and their meaning. I hope you find it interesting and don't worry if it all seems rather confusing when you start out. We are here to help you. The sycamore is a common tree and it's one of the maple trees. Maples have the genus Acer, and the sycamore's name is Acer pseudoplatanus. But let's break that species name down. Pseudo means false, and platanus means plane tree. In fact, the genus name for a plane tree is platanus. This tells us that this maple is a false plane tree, or that it's like a plane tree. And if you look at the leaves of a sycamore, you'll find they are quite similar to those of a plane tree. Using that little piece of information, when we come across the Robinia pseudoacacia, we can see that this Robinia is like an acacia tree. Its common name is even false acacia. The word folia or folium relates to the foliage and is commonly used to describe an aspect of the leaves. We've already mentioned Ilex aquifolium, but other examples include Quercus myrtifolia and Salix myrcinifolia to describe the oak and willow that have leaves that resemble a myrtle, or the Pterocaria fraxinifolia that has leaves like the fraxinus or ash tree, or Zelkovia carpinifolia which has leaves like the hornbeam or carpinus tree. Where the species name is rubra or ruba, this will mean red, hence Quercus rubra, red oak, Ulnus rubra, red alder, or Acer rubrum, red maple. The willow is a commonly found tree, and as a climber, you'd be well advised to check the Salix fragilis tree before climbing it. Fragilis means fragile, and even the common name is crack willow. Pubescence is another descriptive name, meaning hairy, Examples include the downy birch, Betula pubescens, and syringa pubescens, both of which have downy or slightly hairy leaves. Sometimes the species name tells you what sort of environment the tree is normally found in. We've already mentioned Fagus sylvatica, indicating that it is something from the woods, just as the Scots pine, or Pinus sylvestris, tells us the same thing. However, the palustris in Quercus palustris tells us that this oak prefers marsh land. Many trees are named after the plant hunter that found the specimen, or the plant collector. We've already mentioned Picea breweriana at the start of this video, but there is also Pseudosuga menziesii, or Douglas fir, which was named after the plant collector Archibald Menzies or Chamaesoparis lawsoniana, named after Charles Lawson. Naturally, we can only cover a tiny fraction of the descriptive names used in plant naming. But when you are learning the Latin names, try to look for common patterns such as pseudo something to indicate that the tree is like another tree, or something folium provides a clue to the leaves or names depicting colours like rubra, meaning red, nigra, meaning black, glaucus for leaves that are dull green to green blue, or purpurea for purple leaves. It'll take time to recognise the patterns, 
and build up your own mental database of Latin terms, but it's well worth doing.